welcome to my latest YouTube video. I recently did a video on the Beatles UK core catalog on which I got a comment suggesting I cover the US core catalog and I've decided to do so. So thank you Mr. Lennon AXL for uh, the suggestion and hope you enjoy the video. So the Beatles core catalog in the US is much different than the UK catalog. Uh, this is due to some decisions made by Capitol Records to basically butcher the uh, Beatles UK albums up until Sgt. Pepper, uh, creating entirely different releases from what the Beatles released in the UK. So you're going to see some differences here. Now the songs are the same. Some of the mixes are different, and I'm not going to get into that per se. There's some great videos out there uh, going more into depth on the, uh, the Beatles US albums. However, I am not going to do that on this. This is purely to show you the core catalog. Again, let's imagine that we are fans of the Beatles in the 60s in the US and we wanted to have every song that the Beatles released. Now in the UK, the Beatles have 217 songs in their core catalog. The US is two songs shorter. There are only 215 songs in the US because of two things. One, the Beatles did not start releasing singles until 1963, whereas in the UK it was 1962. So the first single, Love Me Do, with Ringo on drums was never released in the US. And also, later on in the Beatles' career, in the UK, they released a song on a Cherry album, uh, No One's Gonna Change Our World, where the wildlife version of Across the Universe was featured that was not released in the US. So you minus those two songs and you have the same 215 songs in the UK, just on different albums. Um, and we're gonna take a look at that. Now interestingly, the Beatles actually had less singles in the US, um, or I should say less singles with exclusive material. We're really only looking at singles that have exclusive material. Also, there are no EPs in the US, uh, no EPs of, of exclusive material. EPs never really caught on in the US. So there, there's none to be spoken of here. The first Beatles release in the US was in February of 1963, Please Please Me, backed with Ask Me Why. This was released on a record label called VJ. In May of 1963, the From Me To You single was released in the US, From Me To You, would be an exclusive track in the time frame we're talking about, 1963 to 1970. So the first album released in the United States was actually this album, Introducing the Beatles. This was on VJ Records, and it was actually released in a couple of different formats, uh, track listings slightly different. I'm not going to go into the history of this. You could easily research that, but this album Introducing the Beatles is actually the first LP released in the United States. It beat out the first Capitol album by a whole 10 days, Introducing the Beatles. This album has never been officially released on CD. So after some delays, the United States catches up with this phenomenon that is the Beatles. In January of 1964, they jump on the bandwagon and release Meet the Beatles. This is considered by many to be a phenomenal album. The track listing is different than the With the Beatles album, the UK counterpart. Um, this is really interesting to look into. I'm not going to go too much into it here, but you can do the research on this, how these Capitol albums differ from the UK albums. First one on Capitol, Meet the Beatles. The third album released in the US, the second on Capital is aptly titled Second Album. Super creative marketing genius is a capital. The Beatles' second album. Now, that's probably due to the fact that they wanted to crush the existence of that first album, introducing the Beatles, and solidify that Capital was it. The Beatles on Capital was where it was at. So, the Beatles' second album. The German language version of She Loves You was released on a record label called Swan in May of 1964. The next LP released by the Beatles was the soundtrack to their movie 
Hard Day's Night, this differed from the UK version in that there are instrumental versions on this. So you are not getting as many songs as you did on the UK version. So you get about eight tracks on this that are actually from the Beatles. This was released by United Artists, not Capital, due to a licensing agreement or some kind of contract with the, uh, the motion picture that allowed them to release this album rather than Capital. The next Capital album, Something New. Great title. The thing about this album that is strange is that Capitol decided to release songs from the motion picture that were already on the United Artists soundtrack. So you were only getting six new songs by the Beatles if you bought that soundtrack. Capitol did all kinds of crazy stuff like this. I'll make a quick mention of this. This has nothing uh, of value on it. It's just simply a, a interview disc, nostalgia piece, interesting to listen to once or twice. But other than that, I, I never listened to the thing. I can't imagine um, others really spending too much time in this. But again, it's an interesting nostalgia piece. In December of 1964, the Beatles released The Beatles 65. I have nothing more to say about that. This next album, again, I'll just make mention of it, but it's really pointless. If uh, you were a record buyer in the 60s and you had the DJ introducing the Beatles album, you had all these tracks already. This was just a way for Capital to take advantage of some legal maneuvers they had done to gain back the rights to the songs from introducing the Beatles, basically the Please Please Me UK counterpart, and they released this pretty pointless. There's nothing on here that hasn't already been released at this point. Beatles 6. Another fantastic title. Now, again, the, the numbering on this may have been an attempt to dismiss other albums that were out, showing this is the sixth major title from Capital uh, of the Beatles. Next is a single, the U.S. single for Help. The B-side featured I'm Down, which is an exclusive song to that single. You tell lies, thing and I can see. In August of 1965, the Beatles released their soundtrack to the motion picture Help, or I should say Capital did. Um, this was different than the U.K. counterpart in that, again, it featured instrumental tracks from the movie. So you only got seven new Beatles tunes on this soundtrack. In December of 1965, Capitol releases Rubber Soul. This is a slightly different Rubber Soul than the UK counterpart. It actually is considered by many better than the UK counterpart. That's debatable. It does have a very good flow of the songs. It starts with I've Just Seen a Face rather than Drive My Car. There are a couple of little changes here and there with songs. Again, I'm not going to go totally into that. You can research that. But this U.S. album from Capitol is considered by many to be one of the better Capitol butcherings. In May of 1965, the paperback writer U.S. single is released, same as the U.K. with the track listing, paperback writer backed with Rain, both exclusive as a single. <laughs> I mentioned Butcherings earlier. This is the infamous Butcher cover of the Beatles' Yesterday and Today. This was a take on the fact that Yesterday was a hit in the U.S. So it's featured on this album. It was not on the Help soundtrack. And this actually took some of the tracks on the forthcoming Revolver and put them on here. So we'll talk about that in a moment. So you actually get Revolver tracks on here before Revolver was even out in the UK. There's a lot of controversy over this cover. You can do some research on that. It was, it was changed to this cover, boring old steamer trunk cover. And today, uh, to find one of the original Butcher covers is a great collector's piece and goes for quite a bit. August of 1966. 
Capital Releases Revolver. This is an atrocity. It is awful. Because some songs from Revolver were put on yesterday and today, they're not here. It takes away from the album to miss songs like I'm Only Sleeping, Dr. Robert, and Your Bird Can Sing. They're just not featured on here, so it's just a shorter version of the UK album. No reason to own this. The UK version is the only way to go. The only redeemable thing about this album in the US is that if you're going in the US chronology, you already have all the songs up to this point, and this just rounds it out. But as an album, it's ruined. Following Revolver, the Beatles decided to standardize their catalog. They were able to renegotiate their contract and made all of their albums universal, starting with Sgt. Pepper. So in June of 1967, Sgt. Pepper is released in the U.S. It is identical to the U.K. in every way, except for the fact that in the U.K., the Beatles added a hidden track at the end of A Day in the Life. This has become known as Sgt. Pepper's Inner Groove. It is just a short, gibberish track, starting with a dog whistle and all kind of gibberish in there. This was not featured on the U.S. Sgt. Pepper. This next album is a Capitol album, but has become universal in the Beatles core catalog since the 1980s, Magical Mystery Tour. In the UK, Magical Mystery Tour was a six-song EP. EPs were not popular in the US, so Capitol made an entire album out of the six songs from the EP, plus the singles from 1967, including Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane. This is actually an excellent album, far superior to the EP in mixing those songs. 1967 was a powerhouse year for the Beatles. So this is, uh, this turned out to be a fantastic album and has been adopted as part of the core catalog. But this started in the U.S. So this is a U.S. official capital album that has become part of the Beatles core catalog, even in the U.K. Lady Madonna, Backed with the Inner Light, is released by Capital Next. This is an exclusive single. Lady Madonna was followed up by the Hey Jude, Backed with Revolution, the single. The Beatles' White Album was released on November 25th, 1968, similar to the UK version. However, only the stereo edition was released in the U.S. There was never any mono edition in the U.S., the first time the mono version actually became available was in 2009 via the in mono box set. Both the stereo and the mono have something to offer. However, if you could only pick one, I'd get the stereo just for Ringo's I've got blisters on my fingers! After Helter Skelter. I've got blisters on my fingers! Fantastic. Next album in the U.S., January of 1969, Yellow Submarine, same as the UK version, only four new songs you're getting on here. Just as in the UK, the single version of Get Back is released, backed with Don't Let Me Down. Two more songs exclusive to a single. This is followed up in June of 69 with The Ballad of John and Yoko. Back with Old Brown Shoe. Two more exclusive songs featured on the single. Abbey Road, which was only ever released in stereo, is similar in the US to the UK. In February of 1970, Capitol released this compilation album, Hey Jude. There's nothing new on this album if you had purchased the singles and albums I've covered up until this point. It really is just a collection of singles tracks that were not featured on any of the Capitol albums up to this time. However, it's still missing some, so it's in no way comprehensive, but it's interesting and a fun listen. In March of 1970, the Beatles released this single, Let It Be, the single version, backed with You Know My Name, Look Up My Number. Great song. I mean, just something so weird in the Beatles catalog. It's one of my favorites. And just as in the UK, the Beatles' final release was Let It Be. I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves. I hope we pass the audition. 